What's up, world? Welcome back to another episode of Just Grow It, the podcast. I'm your host, Big City Gardener, and today we're going to talk about one of the most commonly grown vegetables in all home gardens, and that's cucumbers. This is the Cucumber Grow Guide. Let's get it. If you're unaware, cucumbers are one of the most commonly grown vegetables in a home garden. Their crisp textures can be used in a variety of dishes. From salads to pickles, everybody has a reason to grow cucumbers. Cucumbers are a member of the cucurbits family, the same family that you'll find melons, squash, loofahs, pumpkins, things like that. These are quick maturing crops that grow on vines and need some sort of support in order to produce properly. These are quick maturing crops that grow on vines. Now these vines have tendrils and like to attach to vertical supports like trellises. So if you're planning on growing cucumbers, either have a trellis set up or look for a bush variety. Don't worry, we'll talk more about that in a second. How do we prepare the soil to plant cucumbers? Well, like we just mentioned, Cucumbers are in the same family as melons and squash, so that means they are heavy feeders. So prior to planting your cucumber seeds, what you're going to want to do is to amend the soil. Now, you can amend the soil with compost before planting, or you can amend the soil with a slow-release organic fertilizer. The choice is up to you. Personally, I prefer to use compost. As a matter of fact, I prefer to use compost for everything. While prepping the soil, you want to make sure that you remove any sort of rocks or sticks or anything like that from the soil. You want the roots of the cucumbers to be able to spread out without running into anything that can disturb them. When should we plant cucumbers? Well, cucumbers are a warm season crop. So that means they should be planted whenever the soil temperatures have reached 70 degrees. Also, we want to make sure that we're planting our cucumbers after our last frost date has passed. I live down here in zone 9. The last frost date is usually early to mid-February, but I normally don't plant my cucumbers until the end of March or the beginning of April. Because we always tend to have one more freak cold spell that nobody is anticipating. And since cucumbers are a warm season vegetable, they do not handle the cold well. Just because they're a warm season vegetable, that doesn't mean that you cannot also grow them in the fall. I plant cucumbers in early spring and then I get a crop all the way through the summer. Then I remove the vines and replant cucumbers at the end of the summer to make sure that I'm able to get fall cucumbers. Now, this only works if you live in an area with warm fall temperatures. And if you know us down here in Houston, it's still 100 degrees by the time we get to October. Where to plant cucumbers? You want to make sure you're planting your cucumbers somewhere where they receive full sun. And remember, that's at least six hours of sunlight. This sunlight does not have to be consistent and direct sunlight. It can be broken up into intervals. You also want to make sure you are planting your cucumbers in a place that drains well. So if you have any beds that are in low spots in your yard, you want to avoid planting the cucumbers there. Even though the fruit of a cucumber is predominantly water, that does not mean that the roots enjoy sitting in standing water. Should I direct seed or start transplants with cucumbers? Well, the choice is up to you. Personally, I prefer to direct seed my cucumbers. As a matter of fact, I prefer to direct seed a majority of my warm season crops. But You can still start your cucumbers indoors if that's how you feel. Or you can purchase cucumber seedlings from your local nursery. I'm not the biggest fan of purchasing things like cucumbers from a local nursery because they're so easy to grow and germinate. I just can't see myself paying $4 for a seedling. But if you don't feel confident starting these cucumber seeds yourself or directly sowing them into your garden, then feel free to purchase them from your local nursery. 
You want to avoid any cucumber plants that are already displaying flowers. That means they have probably been in that seedling pot for entirely too long. If you're going to purchase cucumber transplants from your local nursery, you want to purchase the smallest transplant that you can find with the least amount of leaves. You don't want to purchase one that is already vining and growing out of the container. But look, man, it's up to you. You can buy whatever you want. I'm just trying to give you some tips to help you out. If you decide to direct seed your cucumbers, here's a few tips for you. I like to space cucumbers about 14 inches apart. And that's because I grow all of my cucumbers vertically. In each space, I like to plant two cucumber seeds. And then as they grow, I thin it down and only have one vine growing. Now, proper spacing when it comes to cucumbers is you want to keep at least one foot between the plants. But if you're growing your cucumbers vertically, you can shrink that spacing a little bit and bring it down to about six to eight inches. But you're going to want to make sure that you train those vines so that they're not growing on top of each other. Now, let's talk about cucumber varieties. There are two main categories when it comes to cucumbers. We have slicing cucumbers and we have pickling cucumbers. Slicing cucumbers are longer than pickling cucumbers. Some of the most famous slicing varieties include things like Market More, Straight 8, and Fanfare. Now, some of the most famous pickling varieties include things like Homemade Pickles, Calypso, National Pickling, Multi-Pack. If you're not sure which variety you're growing, just check your seed pack because it will give you that information on the front. It's usually located right underneath the name of the variety. But if you're not able to tell from the package, take a look at the picture. If it's a long cucumber, then it's a slicing cucumber. If they display a short cucumber on the front, then it's more than likely a pickling cucumber. Now, one of my favorite varieties of cucumbers to grow that I grow every single year is a Japanese variety known as the Suyo Long. These are the ones that you normally find in the grocery store wrapped up in plastic. When harvested at the right time, they're usually seedless, and it is amazing to see a trellis full of 12-inch long cucumbers just dangling down. Now, if you're short on space or you don't have a trellis, then you're going to want to find a bush variety. When I say bush variety, think determinant tomatoes. They're going to get to a specific height and then just start producing cucumbers all at once. These are easy to grow inside of something like a tomato cage. They don't have the vines that are willing to extend 10, 12 feet. They're short and compact and work extremely well in small gardens or small spaces. You can even grow them in containers. As a matter of fact, you can grow all cucumbers in containers. They have a shallow root system, so there's no need to get five-gallon pots. As long as you're able to keep consistent moisture on the plant, you can grow cucumbers extremely well in a three-gallon pot. Now let's talk about watering our cucumbers. Cucumbers produce one long tap root that extends down into the ground, and then the rest of their roots are shallow and spreading. This allows and helps the cucumber locate any moisture that it can within the soil. Since cucumbers are heavy feeders, they need at least one inch of water per week. When it comes to irrigating our cucumbers, my preferred method is through drip irrigation. As a matter of fact, the only time I overhead water cucumbers is when I am first planting the seeds in the ground and when the seedlings first emerge. Once the vine starts growing and I attach it to the trellis, then I am only applying water through drip irrigation. And that's because cucumber leaves have the tendency to contract powdery mildew. If you don't know about powdery mildew, then you need to go check out the episode where we talk all about powdery mildew, what it is, and how to prevent it. One thing I've noticed is that Trellised cucumbers require more water than cucumbers we allow to sprawl and spread out in the garden. And that's because anytime you allow the cucumber vines to sprawl through the garden, once the vine touches the soil, 
it's going to put out roots in search of water. And that's why trellised cucumbers require more water than cucumbers we allow to sprawl out in our garden. Let's talk about fertilizing our cucumbers. Since cucumbers are a member of the squash family, like we already stated, they are heavy feeders. The easiest way to feed your cucumbers is to start off with nutrient-rich organic soil. Now, once the cucumber grows and attaches to our trellis, you're going to want to side dress the plant with some good organic fertilizer. Apply the side dressing once you see the first flowers produced on your cucumber vines. After that, apply a liquid fertilizer every three to four weeks. My preferred liquid fertilizer to use on my warm season crops is compost tea. And that's because I'm able to mix up a variety of ingredients to ensure that my plants are receiving all of the nutrients that they could potentially need. Don't forget to fertilize your cucumbers. I don't care how rich or how organic your soil is, cucumbers are heavy feeders. If you don't feed them, they will not produce. And there's nothing worse than having this cucumber vine all over your trellis and you only end up getting one or two cucumbers throughout the season. Nobody wants to experience that. Since cucumbers are a member of the squash family, that means that there are pests and diseases that are after those cucumbers just as much as we are. The most common disease that affects cucumber plants is powdery mildew. To combat the powdery mildew, you want to keep the vines trimmed and you want to keep the water off of the leaves. If you don't have a drip irrigation system, then you're going to want to water your cucumbers early in the morning. So that way, if any water gets on the leaves, it has the entire day to dry off. Proper pruning of your cucumber plant will ensure that there is enough airflow and circulation around the plant to reduce the chances of powdery mildew forming. Other diseases that affect cucumbers are things like leaf spot and fruit rot. Now, you want to be careful with these diseases. If you notice them, pull the plant out of the garden. And that's because these diseases can spread from your cucumbers to things like your tomatoes. That's one reason why I do not plant cucumbers next to tomatoes. If you notice any of these diseases on your cucumber plant, remove the diseased plant and then solarize the soil. If you don't know what soil solarization is, it is covering the soil with something like a tarp. This tarp retains the heat in the soil, causing the soil to heat up. Once the soil heats up or solarizes, it kills a lot of the germs, bacteria, and diseases that can overwinter in our soil. But in all honesty, it also kills some of the good bacteria in the soil. So be careful when it comes to solarization. And I don't know if solarization is the word. It might just be solarizing. But either way, you know what I mean. (laughs) The most common pests that affect cucumbers are the squash bug, the spotted cucumber beetle, the striped cucumber beetle, and the banded cucumber beetle. All of these can be controlled with neem oil or by applying a mixture of water and castile soap. Now let's talk about the best part, and that is harvesting our cucumbers. Harvest pickling cucumbers when they are around three inches long and harvest slicing cucumbers when they are around eight inches long. If you ask me, it is better to harvest cucumbers early rather than late. If you get them while they're still young, they're still tender and crunchy. But if we allow a cucumber to mature on the vine for too long, you'll notice the color change. It'll go from green to yellow to white. The flavor gets bitter. And then whenever we cut open a cucumber, you'll notice mature sized seeds. And nobody likes to eat the mature sized cucumber seeds. Not when you can eat the immature tender cucumber seeds. Y'all know I'm right. And that's really it. There's not a lot that you have to do with cucumbers. But I will give you one tip. Probably the most important tip that I'm going to mention in this entire episode. Prune your cucumber vines. Do not allow the main vine to just produce a million lateral vines off of it. 
It's not necessary. And what ends up happening is you have too much foliage. And then that is a breeding ground for powdery mildew. So what I like to do is to allow my cucumbers to produce one main vine and then prune off lateral vines every eight inches or so. That way I limit the amount of leaf growth that there is. That's extremely important. If you don't listen to any other part of this episode, please just listen to that. All right, that's it for today's episode of Just Grow It, the podcast. Now, before I can let you go, I have one ask of you. I love doing these podcasts and I love talking about gardening and trying to spread this love that I have for gardening with the world, but I need your help. I need your help to spread the garden love. So if you could please head over to wherever you're watching or listening to this and please leave me a comment or a five-star review. And if you enjoyed the show, go ahead and subscribe to the show. I have a goal of turning this into a top 10 gardening podcast this year, and I can only do that with your help. So grab your phone and text this episode to 10 different people. If you guys can help me do that, then I can achieve my goal of turning this into a top gardening podcast. But before I let you go, what I want everybody to do this year is to grow a variety of cucumber that they have never grown. A few years back, all of the rave was the sour gherkins, those tiny little cucumbers that look like watermelons. If you haven't grown those yet, go ahead and give them a try. If you always grow slicing cucumbers, try growing pickling cucumbers this year. Try growing the yellow cucumbers or the lemon cucumbers. While they don't taste like lemons, they still look cool in the garden. There are entirely too many varieties of cucumbers for us to be stuck growing the same varieties year after year. Let's try something new. So head out to your favorite local nursery or grab your favorite seed catalog, flip to the cucumber section, close your eyes, and randomly point. Whatever your finger lands on, that's the variety you should order. Once you get the seeds, head out to the garden, put your hands in the dirt, and just grow it.